Welcome to the Unlocking Success with KFAM and MGRC webinar. Uh, we are so glad you're here to learn more about KFAM and MGRC, and how we can help with membership recruitment and retention. First, we are going to start off with some committee introductions. Okay, starting with the Kiwanis Family Relations Committee. So my name is Caitlin Medina. I am the Kiwanis Family Relations Committee Chair and also Lieutenant Governor of Division 45. Our committee also includes our secretary and Lieutenant Governor of Division 30, Kobe Rodriguez. Hi everyone. Lieutenant Governor of Division 33, Leah Barracoso. Hi. Lieutenant Governor of Division 32, Adrian Lee. Hi. Lieutenant Governor of Division 20I, Ella Martinez. Hello. And Lieutenant Governor of Division 18, Charles Max Beha. Hi, everyone. The Kiwanis Family Relations Committee strives to connect the six Kiwanis Family Clubs with Key Club. These clubs include K Kids for Elementary Schoolers, Builders Club for Middle Schoolers, K Kids for College or Circle K for College Students, Action Club for Adults with Disabilities, and Kiwanis for All Other Adults. This year, our committee will be focusing on these main directives promoting the Kiwanis family within Key Club, increasing awareness of Key Club within other branches of the Kiwanis family, creating continuity in Kiwanis family memberships, fostering an active collaborative relationship on all levels between the branches of the Kiwanis family in the Pacific Northwest, and encouraging the creation of new Kiwanis family clubs. And now I'll pass it off to Kira to talk more about MGRC. Hey everyone. My name is Kira Michi, and I am the chair of the Membership Growth and Reactivation Committee. I also serve as Lieutenant Governor of Division 58. Our committee also includes our Secretary in LTG of Division 1936, Ariana Hurtado. Hey, everyone. LTG of Division 131517, Megan Ho. Hey, everyone. LTG of Division 35, Carol Askew. LTG of Division 42C, Alina Green. Hey, everyone. LTG of Division 42V, Kelsey Pointer. Hey, everyone. LTG of Division 62, Kathy Nguyen. Hey, everyone. And LTG of Division 74, Jackson Yamada. Hello, everyone. Each committee has a set of committee directives they focus on throughout their term. This year, we are focusing on creating and sharing resources that will provide a more enriching experience, improve the effectiveness of club meetings, and help clubs retain membership for the 2023-2024 service year. Creating and promoting membership goals for the 2023-2024 service year. And finally, identifying obstacles to chartering and making resources to address them. Now, let's move on to all the tips and tricks you're waiting for, starting with our membership goals for the year. This year, our PNW Key Club membership goals are to grow to 12,100 plus members and 285 plus clubs. In order to help you all accomplish this feat, we have created the membership campaign, including this webinar, a new recruitment video, a few new resources, and older resources that are very useful. Our new recruitment video will be coming out later this fall and will answer the question, why Key Club? It will be great to play at first meetings, Builders Club meetings, or just sharing with the whole school. Next, we have created two new resources, a guide for finding and contacting non kiwana sponsors with many sponsor ideas and a phone call guide as well as an email template to get in contact, as well as a guide to growing membership engagement, which you will learn more about later in this webinar. Now, let's move on to all the tips and tricks you're waiting for. In order to have a successful key club and make a big impact on your community, your key club needs members. Whether your club is barely starting or just looking to bring in a few new members, these tips on recruiting are for you. Now on to MGRC member Alina Green to talk about school promotion. Thanks, Kira. A great way to begin recruiting members is by placing eye-catching posters throughout school hallways. These should display meeting location, time, and dates, and maybe a few benefits of Key Club, such as it is a great way to earn community service hours or it looks great on college applications. Use this as a chance to get some members involved be creative and have fun by holding poster making activities at a meeting. 
Flyers and personal invitations are other great ways to spread the Key Club word. You can also distribute flyers during orientation or visit your local middle schools and builders clubs. Consider adding incentives like candy or prizes to pique interest in the club. For instance, attach a piece of paper uh, advertising the next meeting and enter participants in a raffle or drawing if they return with the paper. Utilize the pre-made templates found in the MGRC link tree for convenience or make your own specific to your club. Leveraging school announcements is a powerful method to boost key clubs visibility. Reminding members about upcoming events, I mean upcoming meetings through morning announcements can significantly increase attendance, particularly when highlighting incentives like food or games and promoting of upcoming events like decon. Social media is another vital tool for membership growth, especially now. Partner with clubs like ASB or Leadership to feature Key Club on school-wide social media accounts, attracting potential members who share our mission to help and serve others. Engage with other clubs and classmates, promote Key Club through countdown posts for upcoming events and critical dates such as dues payment deadlines and club or divisional events. Make sure to include pictures and ser from service events and meetings to show off what Key Club is all about. Now on to Kathy Nguyen to talk about smart advertising. Thanks, Alina. The best way to recruit members is through smart advertising. Key Club offers a wide range of benefits for everyone, whether you're looking for community service opportunities, leadership development, making new friends, enhancing your college applications, or just having fun. Key Club has something for everyone. Tailor your message to target specific reasons based on different class levels. Freshmen can benefit from earning community service hours and making new friends, while upperclassmen can find valuable leadership opportunities. Now, the heart of Key Club is service. Highlight the many different ways to become involved and gain service hours. Focusing on our district project will allow your members to take a positive impact in their very own community. Make Key Club make Key Club stand out by mentioning the large range of exciting events that are offered, from divisional council meetings, joint divisional events, and interclubs to decon and Key Club days. There are so many ways to make new friendships, connect with others through spirit, and maybe even get a few new Instagram followers. Now Thanks, Kathy. Now, the meetings at the beginning of the school year are meant to lay a strong foundation. These will be the first meetings for a lot of people, and it is important to have, an, to have imp impactful ones that serve a purpose. You want these meetings to leave a good impression, so people who attend will want to come back. In order to do this, you should plan on an agenda ahead of time and try to schedule meetings at a time that will have the least number of conflicts. It is very important you promote your first meetings through creating posters, sharing Instagram posts and countdowns, using morning announcements, and wearing Key Club merch to school. Make sure prospective members want to come back by making the meetings exciting and interactive. Hold a Bring a Buddy contest and use MGRC icebreakers and engagement resources to find unique games and activities. Be creative and make Key Club stand out. Now, let's learn more about resources available to you from the Membership Growth and Reactivation Committee. Thank you, Ariana. You made a few great points. Now, I would like to introduce you all to the online space that contains many different resources that will aid you throughout your term as a club officer or member. The link tree contains information such as how to charter clubs with different kinds of sponsors, whether they are Kiwanis Club or not. There's also information covering how to reactivate an inactive and suspended clubs within your division. Lastly, the link tree contains helpful tools such as icebreakers for the beginning of meetings or events, our What is Key Club video. The link tree is located in the PNW Key Club link tree in the PNW Instagram bio. Now, what is the MGRC toolkit? One great resource found in the link tree is the MGRC toolkit. It is filled with helpful graphics, flyers, and information. One includes a presentation template to show at middle school visits, personal invitation templates, recruitment flyers, and many insightful tips and tricks to increase engagement and membership retention. The MGRC toolkit is incredibly helpful and easy to use. Make sure to check it out. Now, on to our guest speaker, 
past Beaverton Key Club president, PNW Key Club governor, and now Key Club international president, Kyle Hansen, for a few words of advice and tips for membership growth and engagement. Yes, thank you so, so much for that kind introduction. And I'm really honored to be here today and have the chance to speak with you all. Um, so for a little bit of background, um, as was shared, I was the Beaverton High School Key Club president my freshman year, where I was able to triple my club's membership um, while also doubling our meeting attendance and retention at the end of the year. And then most recently, I served as PNW Key Club governor, and now I'm Key Club international president. Um, so I was asked tonight to share about my experience with membership in Key Club and specifically as a club president, what I was able to accomplish and what advice I would have to give to you all. Um, in addition to kind of what I've been, what I've learned serving as Key Club International President and advice I can give you from an international perspective as well. So the first thing I wanted to go over um, was how do, can you make Key Club stand out in your school? Because I know there's a lot of clubs in high schools, a lot of service organizations, there's NHS, there's eco clubs, there's lots of other opportunities. So I think it's important to discuss how can we make Key Club specifically stand out as a good option to um, potential members and students? And this, I think, comes down to really two things. We have friendship and partnerships. So first, during my term as um, club president, I really focus on making Key Club a place to meet new people and to make friends. I think when people are joining clubs and they're looking to do something else, they're really looking to meet people and connect with other people. Of course, through the mission of service, but if you ask anyone, the reason that we're all still in Key Club and love it so much is because of the people we've met. Um, such inspiring leaders, such kind and thoughtful individuals um, within this organization. So we worked hard to build the reputation that Key Club was a place to do that. Um, we always had icebreakers consistently. We did games during the meetings. Um, we kept it very high energy, both during the meetings and afterward, as well as at club rushes. We tried to be super, super energetic and outgoing. Um, we did random seating at our meetings and just different things like that to make sure that people know each other, make sure you're breaking up any groups or dynamics. Um, also looking at service projects and how students are interacting, so just paying attention to little things like who might be left out right now, how can you include them, being sure everyone has a positive experience within the club. And then in terms of partnerships, I think it's super important to um, work with organizations instead of against them. So as club president, I worked really hard to have joint projects with other clubs. And we would try to always be in charge or kind of spearheading these projects, whether it was a recycling program we did at my school or an Adopt-A-Family program we hosted. Um, we tried to collaborate with other clubs like our Eco Club or our Japanese club and tried to like really just get Key Club's name out there as someone who's doing a lot of work in the community. Whenever people saw something, they just ended up assuming that Key Club did it. So they knew it was an active club getting a lot done and that made them want to join. And then second, I wanted to go over what advice I would give to officers starting or reactivating their Key Club, which I think is a um, great question. It's kind of a hard point to be at at first. So I would advise you to look specifically at what your school needs. Um, so in the last question, I kind of talked about some schools might have a lot of clubs and a lot of competition for which clubs people are joining. But maybe that's not what your school needs. Maybe your school has little club energy and people are more asking, why should I join a club at all? So I think you should really assess where your school is at and make a plan based on that. If your school already has a good club spirit and reputation, then go for differentiating key club um, versus if it doesn't have that good club energy and not a lot of people are involved in campus, then you might want to consider um, how can you get people to join clubs at all and make key club that club of course you can talk about resume opportunities the friendships college applications um, the whole spectrum of it and additionally definitely make use of pnw's resources i know it's super easy for us to say that um, as the people who make these and distribute these but really as a club president um, i use some of these resources and found them invaluable and nothing beats talking to your lieutenant governors or to your fellow club presidents in your division. So definitely use that opportunity to get help from um, other people and people in your area as well. And then third, I want to talk about how did I specifically double the membership of my club during my term as club president. And I think I was able to do this by really explaining the benefits of being a member in Key Club. I think a lot of times we have success with getting people to show up to the first meeting, 
Um, it's definitely one thing to get 100 or 200 people to show up to your first club meeting, and that in itself should definitely be celebrated. Um, but I think the more challenging part we don't often talk about is how do we keep those 100 members showing up um, consistently, going to service projects, and really engaging in the club. So I think we were able to do that through external incentives like raffle baskets we did, um, having membership tied to their cord ex and other um, just external benefits like that. But again, this will really depend on your school and what people want. But another piece of advice I have for membership, I know they talked about dues um, and definitely make dues collection as simple as possible for your members. I think as club officers, it can be confusing enough for us. Um, so it's important that you think about the best way to communicate dues, why your members are paying dues, and what benefits they get of being a Key Club International um, official member, such as attending conventions and other webinars, events, and resources. Because um, I know that is, for people their first time in clubs, that can be a little um, shocking to hear they have to pay dues. But explain the benefits of it, generally people are a lot more receptive. And then last but not least, I wanted to hit on the engagement portion of it. Um, so hopefully after following some of these tips, you can get everyone to show up to your first meeting. Um, but I think it's important to, to keep your members engaged throughout the year. And for this, the main piece of advice I have is to make your meetings worth going to. Um, I know as a club officer, club president even, it's really hard to plan a fun meeting, it's so much easier to just copy and paste last week's slideshow or agenda and throw some new opportunities in there. But I promise your clubs will appreciate if you try to spice up the order of your meeting, add new activities, maybe move the icebreaker to the end one week or add in a service project one week, and just try to make the meeting essentially worth just showing up to. Your meeting should be at least 30 minutes and it shouldn't be something your members can get at home. So it shouldn't be you just clicking through a slideshow or you just sharing service opportunities. You should have something interactive and something hands-on for people to do. Something that they can't get um, going through the slideshow on their own. Um, specifically, some ideas for that would be bringing in outside speakers um, before doing a service project to educate the community on an issue. Um, or just changing the order of your meetings, like sharing your service opportunities first or last, just so it doesn't feel as repetitive. And then I think the main factor that was really successful for me was having an in-person service project every single meeting. So we would plan something easy, such as giving out cards to people or writing cards to put in food boxes um, or doing a campus cleanup during a meeting. And that way, each member got a half hour of community service just for showing up. So again, just an additional incentive to attend the meetings and stay engaged throughout the whole year. And now I think I'll pass it back for a short Q&A if Charles or Kira wants to take that over. I'll take that over. Thank you so much, Kyle. We appreciate your time. Does anyone have any questions for Kyle for these for a few minutes? I'm happy to answer anything about my term as club president, membership, or my experience on Key Club International, whatever anyone would like to know. Yes, yeah, so send your questions in the chat and I will moderate. Um, Aiden wants to know if you had different clubs coming together for service projects and how that worked. Yeah, definitely. We tried to collaborate at least once a month with a different club to do a service project. Um, so one that comes to mind is during COVID, which was my, like I was transitioning out of COVID and I was club president. And what we ended up doing is working with the eco club at our school. And we made these um, plant boxes for teachers for each classroom. So we would basically plan the project and we'd invite all the eco club members to show up. And then once they were there, we'd obviously like have fun and interact with them and then it kind of explain key club um so at the same time we got a new membership source and help show them like the benefits of key club and other projects like this that we did great thank you um jackson would like to know what brought you to join key club in the first place and we can 
mix it in with what is one of your favorite key club memories that made you want to run for higher office? Yeah, I think, honestly, I've been asked that question why I joined key club and I can't put my finger on it. I don't think I had like a specific reason for joining key club at first. I kind of wanted to meet new people. I wanted to do community service, just be more involved in high school than I was in middle school. And I really just fell in love with key club uh, after my first meeting. And from there, I just kept finding myself inspired by leaders. And I think along the way, my favorite memory from key club um, it was actually my virtual decon that really made me want to run for higher office. Even though we were online, just the energy of seeing all PNW Key Clubbers together in the chat and on Zoom, just how excited everyone was to do community service um, really showed me the scope of this organization and just the potential for impact we have. Thank you so much. One other question we had are, do you have any specific advice for smaller schools with a lot of clubs? Yes, great question. Um, my school is also on the smaller end, or at least for my area, we're about um, 1,300 students. So it's a little bit smaller than other schools near us. Um, and I think the main like thing you can do with smaller clubs is try to make it a really close-knit community. I think you have a unique opportunity because um, you're not going to be trying to advertise to as many students. You can make it super targeted and super personal. Um, so trying to send out personal invitations for key clubs is logistically easier just because there's less students in the school. Um, and I think it really is going to come down to those one-on-one -on -one recommendations at a smaller school rather than that targeted outreach to the entire school. Great, thank you. Um, one last question are, is is something that you miss about being club president? Oh, that's a really good question. I really enjoyed my term as club president. I think the main thing I miss is just my club members and getting to interact with them like in that way as club president because I got to meet a ton of new people and I still definitely do as international president. Uh, but just getting to meet more people in my community, getting to know new people at my school and those around me, and you're seeing like the direct benefit of my community service, like within my school and general community was really, really um, meaningful to me. So I think I missed that for sure. Great. Thank you. All right. This will be our final question. Do you have any ideas for service projects you held at your meetings? Yes, definitely. It was so hard to come up with service projects to do each week at our meetings because um, as you imagine, there aren't a lot of service projects you can do in a half hour. Um, but we looked for inspiration on Pinterest and then also just talking to our local club president and our lieutenant governor to see what other clubs were doing. So I'd recommend definitely doing that. But off the top of my head, I would say free rice is a great one to do if you're in a pinch and don't have any other options. Doing a campus cleanup or area or cleaning up just like a general area around your school. I think also writing cards to put in food boxes or delivered senior homes. And then also making decorations for senior homes for the holiday season is something they often appreciate and that can be easy to do during a meeting. Great, thank you so much. We will move on now to Charles to talk about KFAM. All right, and thank you Kyle for your wonderful insight. So as Kira said, we're now gonna start talking about um, how you can connect with Kiwanis. Firstly, you should connect with your Kiwanis advisor on a regular basis. This will help establish a strong relationship with your sponsoring Kiwanis club. Not only does your advisor have a wealth of information that they can share with you, they can also advocate on your behalf for resources and funding from your sponsoring Kiwanis club. A great example of this is asking your Kiwanis advisor to provide tips and tricks on how to recruit members and to advocate for funds for recruitment and promotional materials. Through active communication, your sponsoring Kiwanis club can stay in the loop of what you do and help better support you as needed. If you are unsure on who to contact, the PNW District has the Kiwanis Family Directory, or simply known as the KFAM Directory, available to use. 
This directory has the list of all the Kiwanis clubs in the PNW district, and it is categorized by which key club division the Kiwanis club is located in. If you are unsure of which Kiwanis club sponsors your key club, then please utilize the PNW key club district directory, which has a list of all the active clubs in the district and their sponsoring Kiwanis club. Both of the directories can be found on the PNW key club website. Speaking of your sponsoring Kiwanis clubs, be sure to keep in contact with them. As we discussed earlier, the support and knowledge they provide is substantial. If you're an officer, be sure to keep in touch by attending some of your sponsoring club's meetings. Try it for like once a month. Doing this could also increase opportunities for collaboration and give members more chances to impact their community, like Key Club volunteering at a Kiwanis sal salmon bake, salmon bake pictured here on the right. Also, be sure to, that your incoming officers have all the vital contact and meeting information they need to continue attending those meetings and staying connected. A sponsoring Kiwanis Club and your Kiwanis advisor can also help guide your incoming officers through this transition. If you're not an officer, be sure to ask your officers and Kiwanis advisor about Kiwanis events and projects. And whether you're an officer or not, your Kiwanis advisor can truly be the link, like mentioned earlier, providing your club with information on local opportunities and giving Kiwanis a window into what Key Club's been up to, ultimately improving involvement and even membership. Ultimately, with their guidance and ideas and support, staying in touch with Kiwanis can only improve your club and enhance your Key Club experience. And now I'll pass it on to Caitlin. Thanks, Leah. Uh, now let's focus on expanding the clay fam. So first off, you want to make sure that your club has enough members to sustain a chartering period. It is super important not to overextend yourself and your club by chartering another Kiwanis family club, because ultimately it is your key club that is most important. Chartering clubs is a lot of work, so really consider if it is the right move for your club. And if it is, um, let's talk with Kobe about the charting process. Thanks, Caitlin. So the first step to chartering a new branch of the Kiwanis family is to find a school that would be a good candidate for chartering. I would highly recommend contacting local schools, perhaps schools you previously attended, and researching to see if they have the requisite resources and interest to sustain a club. These resources necessary to start a club include a proper location to hold meetings, approval from the school's administration, and most importantly, a committed advisor. It is also worth noting that schools without many established service clubs may be particularly good candidates for membership. Once you have a potential school in mind, the next step is to establish contact. So the best way to do this is to email the school's principal, whose email addresses are usually found on the school's website, and introduce them to the Kiwanis family and the benefits of starting a club within the school. Depending on the school and staff, they may have little knowledge of the Kiwanis family, so this is a great time to educate them on the unique strengths of the Kiwanis family. I highly recommend using the email templates in the Kiwanis Family Chartering Guide, which can be found in the Kiwanis Family link tree. If the school has expressed interest and has a committed advisor to continue the process, then the next phase in chartering a club is to secure a sponsor. Although there are no immediate fees just yet, there are fees for chartering, which will be discussed momentarily. So it is vital to secure a sponsor early to ensure that the club can be adequately supported. A sponsor will likely be the Kiwanis club closest to the club, but if that is not an option, then a key club or Circle K International may also sponsor. At this stage, it is now time to plan your first meeting. So this will be the first impression for the school and prospective members. So it is essential to pay extra attention to ensuring that you properly introduce the idea of the club to its members. The Kiwanis Family Relations Committee has created meeting kits for this express purpose and this is a great opportunity to use them. It is so important to assist the advisor of the club through the stage, and a great way to do that is to be present for the first few meetings. Now, the main objective is to grow the size of the club before filling out the paperwork to charter the club officially. Continue to hold regular meetings and help plan appropriate service projects for the club. Once the club reaches about 10 to 15 members, this is an excellent opportunity to elect the position of the club, so president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. You may also choose to create dues for the club. Unlike Key Club, Builders Club and K-Kids do not have any mandatory dues to be paid per member. 
but these dues may assist in paying the fees for chartering and annual dues, especially if you cannot secure a sponsor. Now that the club is stable and growing, this is the perfect time to officially fill out the petition to charter to instate the club. So the petition to charter includes all the information regarding the club's official status and is the most important step in chartering. The petition to charter will also be where the club pays its fees, which are $300 for K-Kids and $400 for Builders Club, along with an additional $215 yearly fee. This is also the place where the club will submit its official bylaws. Work with your school and advisor when submitting the form to ensure everything is in order. After this is done, congratulations, your club will officially be registered with Kiwanis International. The last step in chartering is to continue growing and supporting the club and its advisor whenever possible. This is also a great opportunity to host an optional chartering ceremony to celebrate all of the work accomplished. Finding appropriate sponsors is one of the most important steps in creating a club. Kiwanis sponsors are vital in promoting the club's interconnectedness with other branches of the Kiwanis family in your area. In the initial stages of chartering, reach out to the corresponding Kiwanis club and express your interest in expanding the Kiwanis and why you think it will benefit the community. I would highly suggest attending a meeting to seek sponsorship. Kiwanians often have years of experience, which can help highlight some of the obstacles in chartering a club at a specific location and help you overcome come said challenges. These, uh, these are vital to growing the Kiwanis Club, and it's also a great way to help you charter and pay for its fees. So this does depend on the financial status of the Kiwanis Club, so it might not always be possible. And if this is the case, reach out to local organizations to help fundraise to pay the fees. Another vital consideration when chartering is the potential benefits that chartering a club can have for your own key club. So by chartering clubs in your local area, you can often increase membership in your key club, especially with underclassmen. If members have already joined and had prior experience with K-Kids or Builders Club, they're much more likely to join key club to continue servicing their community. Furthermore, chartering Kiwanis family clubs can increase the passion for service within the community at large, which can help draw in more branches at all levels of the Kiwanis family. Finally, having a wide array of branches in the Kiwanis family allows for collaboration amongst the branches. And these collaborations are great opportunities to connect with more of your community and host larger and more effective service projects. Thank you, Kobe. Now that we have learned how to recruit members, charter clubs, and engage with KFAM, let's learn how to retain our membership throughout the school year, starting with Ariana. As the year goes on, meeting attendance might begin to dwindle as sports in the mid-school mid year lag starts to creep on, on your members. However, your job as an officer is to keep meetings not only informative, but fun. Make sure your meetings are necessary by planning service events to share and exciting activities to engage members. You may want to consider including guest speakers from Kiwanis, the PNW District Board, or a local service organization. Service projects such as blanket making, food or clothes drives, card making, and other simple impactful activities can help make members feel like they are making a difference and that each meeting is meaningful. You may also want to make it, oh, sorry, you may also want to make, um, give Key Club 101 or district project presentations or play videos to educate your members on the opportunities offered through Key Club. Don't forget to also continue to include unique games and icebreakers at each meeting. Now on to Kira to talk about different ways to engage members. Thank you, Ariana. Another great way to keep members engaged and interactive is to have incentives for joining Key Club and the meeting, such as prizes, foods, food, or an award they could receive. Consider creating membership awards or competitions for achievements such as high numbers of service hours, meeting attendance, or spirit. These awards should be given at meetings to encourage attendance. Another great incentive is to come um, to come to a key club meeting is food. If you're having your first meeting of the year, you could advertise that you're having pizza or ice cream to encourage more students to show up and experience what key club is all about. Personalizing the key club experience is essential to retaining members throughout the school year. As key club, uh, allow key club to stand out by emphasizing your impact on the community. Find service projects that are fun and meaningful and incorporate them into your meetings. Center them around the district project by making hygiene kits, blankets, or presenting the importance of the SEED initiative. Now, don't forget that inclusive environment goes a long way. Utilize the MGRC toolkit 
and guide to membership engagement resource, as well as the icebreaker resource to find unique icebreakers, games, and projects to allow members to find an interactive new community and have meaningful experiences through service. As you all may know, Key Club's core values include caring and inclusiveness. We want all members to feel that they can be their true self at our club. This means that we should be trying our hardest to ensure that nothing prevents members from participating. We should all strive for more diverse, equitable, and inclusive clubs. The following questions can be used to determine how cognizant your club is of these goals. For diversity, are the demographics of your community represented in your club? Is there a reason a specific group is missing? For equity, are there financial barriers preventing members from paying dues? Are there transportation barriers preventing members from participating in service opportunities or divisional events? And for inclusion, are you making certain accommodations so that everyone can participate in the meeting? Do members from all backgrounds feel welcome? Take some time to reflect on these questions and see which area your club is lacking in. If you're struggling with how better to address these goals, read up on our um, hybrid engagement toolkit found in the MGRC link tree. Now on to Jackson to talk about what you can improve if you're facing membership loss. Thank you, Kara. Members are very important to keep any club active. Without members, Key Club wouldn't exist. However, it is a common trend that members dwiddle, membership dwindles as the year goes by. But don't get discouraged. Simply use it as a learning experience. As officers, is your job to find out why membership is struggling and learn how you can keep members engaged and fulfilled. One way to learn is through asking for feedback from your club. Put together a committee to ask questions and what membership feel they are lacking. These questions could be about your icebreakers, service opportunities, organization, or overall fulfillment in Key Club. This will show your members you are committed to an engaging and valuable Key Club experience and will allow you to improve your club. The best clubs grow from their struggles. Make sure to incorporate the feedback and ensure your gain from your members. Now on to Carol for feedback. To collect, to collect feed, or thank you, Jackson. Feedback is an incredible, valuable tool to grow your Key Club experience. Though it can seem daunting at first to actively seek out criticism, being open to obtaining and using past member comments as data for improved meetings and service projects is an essential skill for a Key Club leader to have. Additionally, seeking out feedback from active members can also be just as effective as it gives members a voice and improves your tension. By prioritizing the voice of your key club members, past and current, members will value your care and you will have a better gauge on what events to prioritize during your term. To collect feedback, utilizing Google Forms to gain member perspectives such as the month monthly Google Forms to collect service hours and member opinions on those projects done that month could improve secretary report thoroughness, as well as your annual achievement report scores at the end of the year. On top of that, to gain more ideas on what are projects, what projects to complete, review new resources made by MJRC, such as how to grow membership engagement resource. However, as a leader, giving feedback is just as important as receiving feedback. Therefore, during your term, be sure to recognize club members on your club show socials, or during meetings to show your appreciation for all that your members help you do. After all, building up new leaders is one of the responsibilities of a leader. Now on to Megan to teach us about Key Club dues. All right, thank you, Kira. So Key Club members must pay their dues on time to ensure that all, all are official members. The minimum dues amount is $12.50 USD, which includes $7 of international fees and $5.50 of district fees. Your club can decide to change or to, to charge more to support other expenses that is acceptable as well. These payments go towards key club funds that are used for club and officer resources, as well as district events such as key club days, decon, and more. Remember that the dues early bird deadline is November 1st, and clubs who meet this deadline will be included in a raffle for spirit gear, bundle, and a pizza party. So make sure to get your clubs to turn in their dues early. The regular deadline is by December 1st, so start immediately on trying to recruit as many members as you can to collect their dues. As a reminder, all suspended clubs must submit dues before October 1st, 2023 for the 2022-2023 year. Failure to do so will result in these clubs being considered inactive and subject to a reactivation fee. 
When paying dues, make sure that club treasurers in your division introduce themselves to their school bookkeepers when school starts so that they can keep track of how many people are official members and how much money is in their key club account. Officers will also need to collect member names, personal emails, and graduation year at meetings so there is a list of official members with complete information for the PNW district mailing lists. Dues should be paid through the MUC, also known as the Membership Update Center, for the 2023-2024 school year. You should stay current with the dues payment status for each key club in your division so that you can reach your divisional goal for membership and celebrate membership growth from the previous year. Be sure that clubs are aware of the dues deadline so that they don't become inactive. If they don't submit dues before February 1st, they cannot attend Decon 2024. The Kiwanis Advisor, Faculty Advisor, Club Treasurer, and Club Secretary should all have access to the MUC. There is a link to the MUC video tutorial if you do not know how to access it. All key club members should be added and updated each time the club pays dues. Questions regarding the MUC can be directed to Eric Lee, who is our PNW District Treasurer. You can contact Eric by emailing treasurer at pnwkeyclub.org. Thank you, Megan. Um, and now back to KFAM, starting with Kiwanis Family Flow with Charles from Division 18. Thank you, Caitlin. To have a continuous flow of Kiwanis Family Clubs will greatly help with membership. Exposing members to the values and activities that the Kiwanis Family branches do benefits the entire Kiwanis Family as a whole. Starting with K-Kids at the elementary level and then Builders Club at the middle school level, Establishing these different clubs at different parts of their lives will benefit Key Club greatly as it will make them familiar with what Key Club is. And for Kiwanis, it will also help Kiwanis continue to grow in the future as they will be able to have members from its various service leadership programs become full-fledged Kiwanians. Now, I would like to introduce our next guest speaker to talk more about Kiwanis Family Flow. Please welcome the president of Robert Bateman Secondary Key Club and fellow Division 18 Grizzly, Lydia Afutko. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Lydia Akufu, and I'm the president of the Robert Bateman Secondary Key Club. Tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with Builders Club, and then I'll talk about how it has been beneficial to Key Club. Okay, first, how did my time in Builders Club influence my desire to join Key Club? So I joined Builders Club when I was in grade seven, which happened to be the year that COVID hit. Unfortunately, I was only part of the club for a few months as they did not continue it during my grade eight year. However, for the few months that I was part of it, I really enjoyed being able to do something as small as send a card to a senior home or participate in a garbage cleanup because I knew that my actions were making a difference in my community. Furthermore, I created long lasting relationships that I'm still part of today. The friends that I made in Builders Club are still my friends today because we share the love for helping others and building connections both within the school and society. When I learned that Bateman had a similar club, key club, I realized that it was something that I would like to join in the future. I wanted to continue helping out and making an impact as well as continue to make new connections wherever I go. I also knew that I would pursue a leadership position in Key Club to be able to share my enthusiasm about volunteering with others. Now I'm gonna talk about the impact Builders Club has on Key Club. The Builders Club provides a preview to the middle schoolers of what Key Club is like. It feeds the growth of the Bateman Key Club since many Builders Club members go on to attend Robert Bateman for high school. By participating in, key, in Builders Club, students already have the inspiration to continue helping their community and volunteering their time. Joining Key Club makes that goal and or dream easier to achieve. Additionally, Builders Club provides a way for Key Club to continuously gain members as more students from the high school every year will be flowing from the middle school and they'll be interested in Key Club. For example, this past May, along with my vice president, Jada, I went to speak to the Builders Club about Key Club, which resulted in some Builder Club members participating in the bike ride fundraiser Bateman hosted in late May. Then in June, 
we talked to all of the eighth grade classes about the benefits of joining Key Club. I'm hoping to continue to see a significant growth in the population of our club this year because of that talk. Right now, our Key Club has doubled in size as former Builders Club members have joined Key Club this year. We had 40 members last year, and so far we have 83. Builders Club nurtures youth and persuades them to join Key Club as they grow to participate, as they grow to love participating in service projects and helping their communities. And finally, what collaborations has my club done with Builders Club or how do we plan to collaborate with them in the future? While the Robert Bateman Secondary Key Club has yet to collaborate with the Builders Club on an event or project, we did invite them to participate in our Bike Ride for Cancer event that took place this past May. We, they were encouraged to sign up with their friends to go out and raise money for the BC Children's Hospital Oncology Department. We had 12 students from the Builders Club, along with some volunteering teachers from Claiborne, participate in this fundraiser. We were able to raise over $5,000 from this event. In the future, we plan to do a joint fundraiser with the Builders Club to raise money for the BC Children's Hospital or the Cyrus Center so we can capitalize on gaining funds for either place. We would also like to help the Builders Club execute an event that would be hosted in their school to further inspire them and others to join Key Club. Okay, thank you for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have now. Thank you, Lydia. Um, if you have any questions for her, um, send them in the chat and I will be moderating them. Um, Jackson asks, what is your favorite memory of Key Club? Um, I really like the district meetings that we have where we like come together, all of the schools in our district come together and then we play games and then we just get to meet everyone in our district. That's really fun. And it also helps us to build like relationships throughout our division. And then we all just kind of keep in contact with each other and then we're able to like collaborate on different service projects together. Nice. Um, Leah asks, how does your key club keep in touch with your builders club? So every month or so, I'll send an email to Claiborne Middle School. So that's the middle school that has our builders club. And I'll just talk to the principal and ask her if it's possible for us to do some collaborations with the builders club. And she'll send me um, the information that I need so that I can get in contact with the Builders Club leaders at Claiborne because it kind of changes every now and then and then we'll do some events with them or even the execs at Bateman will go and have a talk with the Builders Club and just kind of see what they're doing and how we can help them to grow their members as well. Uh, Thomas asks do you have any advice to advertise Key Club to middle schools without Builders Clubs? I would say email the principal or the vice principal of those middle schools and ask if it's possible for you to get in contact with all of the grade eight teachers and then work out a time with each individual grade eight teacher to see when you can go in to and talk to their class about Key Club and then also show like a promotional video and just kind of have examples of why you joined and then why it's really fun and you've continued to be part of it. Um, what are the main differences between Builders Club and Key Club? Um, and how does Key Club build on those experiences from Builders Club? So I would say the main difference between Key Club and Builders Club is the amount of independence you have in Key Club. Because with Key Club, it's mostly like student run. Whereas with Builders Club, since you're still in middle school, teachers have a big influence in what you do. But with Key Club, we take the experiences that former Builders Club members had, and then we try to talk about them, see what they enjoyed, what they didn't like, and then we just kind of work around that and try and make a positive environment for everyone. While you were in Builders Club, did you have ever have any influential encounters with older key clubbers? 
So when I was in Builders Club, we didn't have a key club at Bateman yet. So I wasn't able to interact with any of them, but we are hoping that some of the Builders Club members right now will be able to interact with us. Um, I think that's all of our questions. Thank you, Lydia. Um, Thank you. If anyone has any more at the end, um, we'll also take questions then. Um, okay. Um, so now we're going to move on to um, Adrian talking about um, some joint project ideas. Thanks, Caitlin. Joint service projects with other branches of Kiwanis are not only fun, but also extend an invitation to the rest of the community to become more involved. The next few slides will have some examples of these joint service projects, and I'll be explaining a couple things to keep in mind when planning them. Starting with K-Kids, the elementary school level, an important aspect to be cognizant of when planning a joint service project is accessibility and simplicity. Elementary schoolers aren't always able to transport themselves and rely on guardians or older siblings to drive them around, so hosting the service projects in close proximity to their school is key. The service projects should be simple enough where the kids can perform them with minimal guidance. And so the goal is for us to be the facilitator and help the elementary schoolers foster their creativity and experience service. Moving on to the middle school level of Kiwanis, the same considerations from K-Kids still apply to Builders Club. With Builders Club, something to emphasize more is urging them to think about issues people are facing in the community and ways to alleviate or help solve those problems. This will help plant the seed of communal awareness so that they can take a more proactive approach in the community, which will also help prepare them for Key Club later on. With Circle K International, the collegiate branch of Kiwanis, this is where you can start planning more elaborate service projects. College application workshops are a great service project to do together because it's highly relevant to high school students. Hosting a blood drive or a walkathon are also other great options since those tend to require more planning. So with more people involved, it can help simplify the process. Next up is Kiwanis, the adult branch. With Kiwanis, they truly are our number one supporters. So you can always serve alongside them at one of their Kiwanis sponsored service events in the community. If you're planning on holding a drive, Kiwanians are a great help because they may also donate items or monetary donations and can help connect you with businesses in the community who are also willing to donate. The key here is communicating with Kiwanis because they're always looking for ways to help serve and build a stronger community. And finally, there's Action Club. So Action Club is made up of adults with disabilities who are dedicated to taking action within their community. And with Action Club, you can fundraise, perform environmental projects, or host drives together as joint community service projects. When planning the project, ensure that the location is accessible and accommodating for all. Now I'll pass it on to Ella to talk about Kiwanis Blend Day. Thank you, Adrian, for discussing joint service projects. These activities are an ideal way to connect with local KFAM branches. So what better day to celebrate than Kiwanis One Day? Kiwanis One Day is an annual celebration held by all branches of the Kiwanis family, inviting clubs to contribute to their local communities by partaking in joint service projects. This year, Kiwanis One Day will be held, as always, on the fourth Saturday of October, that being the 28th. Make sure to get an early start in planning alongside your local Kiwanis clubs. We encourage you all to utilize the service project ideas listed previously and come together in the service of your community. It only takes one day to make a difference. Now we'll move on to Key Club Spirit. So speaking of collaborating with local branches, be sure to interact with nearby Key Clubs. Remember, Key Club is still a branch of the Kiwanis family. So participate in division-wide events like DCMs, and also encourage your club to hold inner club events, which are events with other clubs. If the nearest clubs are miles away, online events also work. You as a member can use these as an opportunity to connect with key clubbers and like-minded service-oriented high schoolers beyond your school. On the next slide, here are a few examples of successful inner clubs. 
that can be socials like this bingo or barbecue event involving only the clubs in a school district or in the area. They can also be centered around service like the food bank event featured on the right, which had key clubbers from three different schools. And as always, you and your club are welcome to reach out to any LTGs, advisors, or Kiwanis members for help with coming up with unique ideas. And lastly, I'll pass it back to Ella to highlight the uniqueness of Key Club. Thank you, Leah. Highlighting the unique structure and opportunities that Key Club provides sets it apart from other school clubs and encourages membership growth. One of the most unique aspects of Key Club is the myriad of opportunities for members to assume leadership positions among the various levels of Key Club from divisional positions to international ones. These opportunities allow eager club members to foster leadership skills at many different levels and connect with the wider community of key clubbers more easily. Of course, even a member that doesn't want to pursue one of these positions can experience the wider community of key club. With key club's multiple levels and events such as key club days or decon, the organization fosters a sense of community among its members that makes it stand out from other clubs that only extend to their school. Another benefit of Key Club is the opportunity for greater community impact due to its international scale. Members can participate in district projects and other large incentives, as well as apply for grants that break down barriers, keeping clubs from extending their own community outreach. Finally, Key Club is unique because of the Kiwanis family. Not only does it encourage connectivity between all the branches of one's community, it also offers clubs a chance to both utilize the support network of KFAM and uplift others within it as well. Any one of these aspects can make Key Club stand out as an incredible organization that goes above and beyond to support both the communities of individual clubs and that of the entirety of Key Club International. Thank you, Ella. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you all for your attention and participation. Um, I hope you all found something helpful from this presentation. Next, we'll be holding a Q&A session for both the MGRC and KFAM committee, as well as our guest speaker, Lydia. So please put in your questions in the chat. Yes, we will be sending out the slideshow um, right after this meeting. So you guys can look back on all the slides, take pictures of any information you guys found valuable. Aiden asked how this will be, the slide will be sent out and we will send it out through email. If you registered for the, um, for the webinar, we will be sending you the slides. Okay, last call for questions before we end. Okay, you, everyone can feel free to reach out to us on email. Um, you can find all of our information on the PNW Key Club website um, if you have any follow-ups. So thank you all for coming.